We're here at Sun and Fun, and we came by to look at not propeller blades, but the hub to the propeller blades and some magic that goes on inside there. I'm Dan Johnson. I'm talking to Bud Yearly, and he's going to tell me some things about this hub. But first of all, describe what it is, and then we'll talk about what it takes to install it and maintain it and things like that. Bud. Be happy to, Dan. The uh, Airmaster AP series of hubs are propellers that are designed to be installed by the amateur builder, maintained by the amateur builder, and are set up for any of the Rotax, Jabiru, any of the uh, Titan. We've even got uh, propellers for the Viking engine, any of the SAE hubs, and we can go up to the O320 in the Lycoming, 150 horsepower. It's an electric, Ground, uh, uh, in-flight adjustable. Okay, so I want to ask you again, you said electric and constant speed like they're different animals. Explain that a little bit for me. Let me go through that for you. This is a completely uh, ground adjustable or air adjustable when it's in the manual mode. Like many of the European ah, manufacturers. Ah, okay. However, they want, we a, have, they want a position switch. They want go a position. Go fast, go slow. What we have is we also have the uh, constant speed controller. What this does is it picks up the RPM of the uh, propeller, controls it for, for instance, this is set up for a Rotax. It is 5,750 RPM, 50 RPM below the red line of the engine to give you maximum power right. of the engine. In climb, it gives you your maximum continuous, which is 5,500 RPM. Okay. In cruise, it goes automatically to 5,000 RPM. If you had a normally aspirated Rotax engine, Jabiru, you could set the throttle at full throttle, literally and take just, off and just, and just that. click the switch. It's as close as a FADEC as you can get for yeah, an that's experimental beautiful. engine. Oh. This propeller can be installed by one person in about two hours. Really? Okay. The propeller comes and as our And that person hub. doesn't have to be an AMP? It doesn't have to be an AMP. It is designed for the amateur builder. Everything in this propeller has been assembled at the factory and balanced. You stick it onto the front of, in this particular case, a Rotax. This, uh, this propeller will have three blades. Each blade is numbered and marked so that it goes into its appropriate slot. It's already been statically balanced. You simply put it in, rotate the blade down, torque it, set the set screws, and every annual you pull off the blade and you can go through and do greasing of the hub and whatnot. Seaplane guys, right? Yeah, yeah, they're hard you're on that kind hard, of stuff, you're right? You're in a high water environment. Right. You've got to service your propeller on a routine basis. So every annual you can pull it apart and do all the servicing yourself. But Dan, here's where the real uh, play comes in with the, uh, the Airmaster. We have blades from many different manufacturers. In the United States, I use Whirlwind. Yeah, it has your Sensage. name on it, but you're not it, actually that's assembling right. the blade. But I'm not, uh, the blade is actually, Fabricating, we I take, say. yeah, the, f the blades are fabricated for us by Sensionich, Whirlwind, Warp Drive, I see, any okay. of the good U.S. manufacturers. We also have Bali, Kiev, and a number of other foreign blades. Oh, wow, okay. So what we do is we set them into the ferrule so that you get the blade, the exact blade that you want for your airplane. Let's say you've been flying with a warp drive and you've been happy with the warp drive, but you need just that little bit more on takeoff and you need that little bit more in cruise. This is what I can do for you. We can take your particular blade desire whether it's a stole 75 inch blade or it's a nice little 64 inch blade for a pocket rocket. And we can put that propeller blade of your choice on there. But here's another How many thing. of these are operating? Uh, right now over a thousand. Oh wow. And we have, okay. uh, here's something interesting. What if you have a motor glider? This is a completely feathering propeller. Oh, now I'm an old soaring pilot, so All that's right, very so, keen And to that's me. what I have. In fact, I've got that on that airplane right over is there. Right? I can feather that prop out and I can uh, glide at 17 to 1. Wow, now, excellent. Now, if I take a, um, what if I have a seaplane? Nothing worse than coming into the dock with just a little too much speed in the tailwind. Uh-huh. Okay. Know we about have, that problem, too. We have the beta version, which is you just simply go to beta, flip the switch up, and the propeller reverses. <laughs> so you can brake so you can back as you up come into in. into position, huh? Or you can also <laughs> back off the sandbar. <laughs> really? So if you go to our Airmaster website, you can see videos of guys, float plane guys, backing off of uh, the beach. Is that right? Uh, and you can also see uh, uh, photos of uh, aircraft, uh, soaring aircraft that uh, have this. 
And like I said, if you've got an engine from an 0320 down to a Rotax 912, we can match a prop to you. Beautiful. A couple other controls I'm seeing on here. You mentioned one of them already, but you got the auto or manual switch. And if you have it on manual, you're using this. You're changing which course is, and Which fine. is an infinite adjustment then. Dan, I get to the end of the runway and I want to cycle my prop like any other one to make sure it Just works. Just to make sure everything's going back and I forth. I flip the switch to manual and I crank the prop down. I'm at 4,000 RPM in a Rotax. I do my mag check. I flip this to manual, run the prop down. Flip it back to auto, and now the automatic controller goes, oh, wait a minute. I, I need something. to okay. find out here. You know, I need to go to a finer uh, pitch setting ready for takeoff, because he's got takeoff selected. Ah, okay. And it'll ah, automatically do okay. it. You cycle the prop, and you know the prop is working before you ever slam the throttle forward. One word of caution. When you put a constant speed prop on just an average airplane, you don't realize how much more thrust you have. Uh -huh. You can take, for instance, a 914 Rotax, I can put out over 500 pounds of thrust. You put that on a Kit Fox or a Highlander, and suddenly that little 700 pound airplane that's sitting on its tail wheel with great big balloon tires, you better have the stick back because <laughs> you are about to go on a ride. It is. Uh, it really gener generates cool. uh, a lot of thrust. The other thing is, is there's nothing worse than those long propellers where you lower the nose and suddenly you're overspeeding the engine. Mm. Constant speed will take care Fixes of that, that for you, keep you out of trouble. So it's almost a safety feature as well then. Well, you know, I like to call it the, a Fadex system for us amateur builders. Well, you know, I built love automation. Uh, you know, automation's got to work right, but when it works right, it's obviously a lot easier. So. And when we're sitting, uh, you know, when you look at it, uh, this prop has never left me stuck out. Even if you have complete electrical panel failure, I was just going to ask can you, come what up, about if the juice goes down, I the can, electrical juice? I can pop this off, take any 9-volt battery, and I can drive the motor to a, ah. a pitch setting. The motor has a lock in it so that once the motor stops, the pitch won't vary anymore. Now you can go home with a fixed pitch propeller. The beauty of it is I can run the blade that I want. I can put it into a bulletproof hub. And I can install it myself, maintain it myself, and the TBO is 2,000 hours. Uh, I'm glad you mentioned that. I was going to ask you that. Okay, so about the same as all the engines you mentioned. That's then. correct. So you get the engine TBO working, you deal with the prop at the same well, time. Well, you know, by the time you get 2,000 hours on an airplane, probably need to do a nose to tail on it Yeah, anyway. probably do. That's quite a bit of flying. You didn't talk about hold. What is hold on the controller unit? Let's say that instead of cruising at 5,000 RPM, I've got a nice tailwind and I want to throttle my 914 back to about oh, 4,600 RPM in about 26 inches and just ride at about 130 true going, going with a 40 knot tailwind. Using now, almost no fuel. Instead yep. of being stuck here at uh, 5,000 RPM, I can go to hold and now in auto, this becomes ah. an RPM setting I see. switch. Okay. All right. And now I can set the RPM to exactly what I want, set my manifold pressure, and then just sit there and make gas. Beautiful. All right, well, that's a lot of great information, but you know what, despite my effort to ask all the questions people would ask if they were standing here, Understood. I'm sure I missed some. Where do we find you on the web? We'll put it up on the screen for everybody. Just tell us what it is. Airmasterpropellers.com. There you go. Is the best way to go. Custom Flight Creations is the name of my company. I'm here in the United States, and I'm- Where are you based? Right here in Tampa. Beautiful, okay. So it's, uh, I'm the shell answer man for the local U.S. Uh, experimental market. Excellent. We love that stuff. That's great. You can find more about all kinds of those airplanes Bud's talking about and the whole range in aircraft of in affordable aviation on bydanjohnson.com. Thanks for joining Bud Yearly and myself here at Sun and Fun. Pleasure, Dan.